Reinforcement learning is an exciting branch of artificial intelligence that trains algorithms using a system of rewards and punishments. It's a type of algorithm used if you want to create a smart bot that can virtually beat any video game. In this video, I will try and demystify reinforcement learning by showing you how an AI is trained on a special game in my heart, Flappy Bird. Before we actually dive into the algorithm that drives the bot's intelligence, we first need to understand how the AI, also known as the agent, interacts with its environment. Most reinforcement learning games are built on top of the Markov chain model. And it's really important to understand this concept before we move on to reinforcement learning because it serves as the foundation of the entire AI algorithm. In essence, a Markov chain tells us the continuous relationship between an agent and its environment. The agent takes in a state and a reward from the environment. And based on these two variables, the agent chooses the optimal action, which gets passed back into the environment. This represents one iteration. Then the environment returns a new state and a new reward to the agent based on the action. The agent gets updated with that new state and new reward and chooses a new action that gets fed back into the environment. This is how the continuous loop repeats itself. Okay, I know this sounds extremely confusing, so let's break it down using Flappy Bird to better understand Markov chains. I actually didn't write this code for Flappy Bird, so I'll link the original author in the description but I modified parts of it to better represent micro chains. When we initialize our environment, the agent, which is the bird in our case, doesn't have any associated rewards yet, but it is given an initial state, which is composed of different observations. In this specific environment, there are two observations per state, the bird's horizontal distance to the pipe and the bird's vertical distance to the lower pipe. Note that these are observations that we define ourselves, since in the real Flappy Bird game, these numbers are not explicitly stated. The state composed of two observations will provide the agent with enough information to learn and optimize its actions later on. Equipped with the state, the AI will choose one of two possible actions, to flap or not to flap. The action that is chosen gets fed back into the environment, which will either give back a reward or a penalty to the agent, as well as a new state composed of new observations. Let's break this down even further. First, let's talk about rewards. Since the goal of Flappy Bird is to obtain the highest score possible, we would adjust our rewards to encourage the AI to stay alive as long as possible, right? So for each action that the bot chooses and results in staying alive, it will get a reward of 15. But if it chooses an action that results in it's hitting the pipe, so ending the game, it will get a negative reward or a penalty of a minus thousand points. Note that these are constants that we define ourselves. We can change them to any value we want, but 15 and minus 1000 points as parameters gave back solid results after experimenting with different values. The agent chooses a new action for every new frame that we see, so a new reward is passed to the agent for every frame. Second, updating the state of the agent. This is very simple. Say the bot chooses not to flap. If the bird dies by choosing not to flap, the game will reset in the next frame. Now that a new state and a new reward have been passed to the agent, we're back at the beginning. The agent chooses a new action based on a new state. The reward will play a role in training the agent to make better decisions using reinforcement learning by learning the best action for a given state. We'll see this later on. The action chosen by the agent is passed back into the environment, which passes back a new state and a reward slowly after. Now you can see how this Markov chain is repeated once for every new frame that appears on the screen. Hopefully this first part was clear enough because now we're gonna jump to Q learning, which is basically how the agent learns to improve at the game. There are quite a few complex algorithms out there for reinforcement learning, but I'll be explaining basic Q learning, a technique that is aimed at choosing the best action for a given state. Here's the formal notation. Essentially, the goal of the Q learning algorithm is to maximize the value function Q, where Q stands for quality of an action taken in a given state. And this quality of an action in a given state is determined by the rewards used to provide the reinforcement. In the end, for any finite Markov decision process, Q learning can find an optimal set of actions starting from an initial state to maximize the expected value of the total reward over any and all successive steps. In other words, Q learning is able to look into the future in order to maximize its total rewards rather than just its reward at the present. 
Let's break it down again to see how this applies practically. First, we need to build a queue table, which simply consists of all possible queue values. Let's see how Flappy Bird's queue table looks like. On the left, each row represents a possible state in the game. Remember that in our Flappy Bird environment, we have two observations per state. The total number of states in our queue table is simply the total number of observations possible. For this environment, the horizontal distances vary between minus 2 and 14, while the vertical distances vary between 0 and 14. Since the values are rounded to integers, there's 17 times 15 possible states, which is 255. The end result is a queue table of dimensions 255 by 2, which, relatively speaking, is pretty small compared to queue tables of other games. We start by initializing our queue table with uniform values. But our hope is, in the end, to fully populate this queue table so that we know the queue values of all actions given a state. Now that we have initialized our queue table, we can use our queue learning algorithm to update our queue table. An agent chooses its action using its queue table. For a given state, the best action is the one with the highest queue value. Since the table has initially been randomized, the actions will also be randomized. Then the queue value gets updated using the formula, which is new queue equals parentheses one minus learning rate plus parentheses times current queue plus learning rate times open parentheses reward plus discount times max future queue close parentheses. All right, I know it doesn't make sense at all, so let's go word by word. Learning rate and the discount factor are fixed parameters that do not change. They are calculated using trial and error. The learning rate controls how quickly the model is adapted to the problem and is often in the range between 0 and 1. This count is a measure of how much we want to care about the future reward rather than immediate rewards. It is usually fairly high because we want to put a greater importance on long-term gains in between 0 and 1. We know the value of current Q, which is access to the Q table. We know the reward, which is either 15 or minus 1000, depending on whether or not the bird stays alive. And max future queue is done the same way we choose current queue, except the state will be the new state at t plus 1. And here we're simply taking the maximum queue value of all possible actions. This is why we say that in queue learning, we're not just interested in the present, we also want to look in the future. Finally, we update the current queue of that action given a state with new queue. The process of queue learning and updating the queue table is repeated until the agent has explored all possible states with all possible actions, allowing it to make extremely smart decisions. One thing to note is that whenever an agent dies, the game simply resets, but the queue table doesn't reset. So the agent is able to make smarter and smarter decisions over time because of this. In conclusion, a simple queue learning approach performs relatively well in simple games such as Flappy Bird, but in more complex games, this approach doesn't work well. This is because in queue learning, all states must be explored for the AI to make good decisions, since if the state has not been seen before, the agent will just make random decisions. When we look at other algorithms for reinforcement learning, such as deep Q learning, these are much more powerful algorithms because agents are still able to make smart choices on unknown data. I'll probably make a video on deep Q learning shortly, but until then, I'll see you guys in my next video.